Dried fruit, cancer, and diabetes. Is there a connection? Is dried fruit good or bad, potentially, when it comes to cancer and diabetes? Hey, everybody. My name is Chad Cruiser with Anchor Point Films, and we've been doing a little bit of dehydrating fruit because we have some time right now. And, you know, right now we did some bananas because I don't know if you've ever had homemade dehydrated bananas. They're totally different than what you get when you get them at the store where they've added sugar or oil or what have you to it. Just simple bananas. They're normally, if you don't over dry them, they're squishy. They're just incredibly tasty and they taste totally different. And so we took the time to cut them up and, and to go through the process of dehydrating. 24 hours in our dehydrator would have been good enough, but we did it for about 36 hours, which was a little too much. They would really last for a long time but they don't last that long in our house because we eat them too fast, but they're just, they're just great. But let's look at the research. So before we go into dried fruit, let's just look at overall fresh fruit and its connection to cancer. This is the Boyd Orr cohort. This was a study that was a 60 year follow-up starting with 4,999 people. And they found a 38% decrease in cancer risk for those who ate the highest intake of fruit. Now this is association. And so this, you know, correlation is not always causation, but it's interesting when you look at fruit and vegetable intake, you generally see the very same thing. You see lowered chances of coming down with something specifically like cancer in general. But what about dried fruit? That's another issue. Well, let's look at some of the other issues of dried fruit. Dried fruit versus fresh. Dried fruits, gram for gram, have higher fiber higher antioxidants than fresh fruit. And the quality of the antioxidants is just as good as in the dried fruit. So when we're looking at getting those fantastic antioxidants for our health, you actually get more gram for gram in dried fruit than you do in fresh fruit. Well, that just makes sense because you've taken out the water. So they're lighter, but then you can eat a higher quantity. It's easier to eat a higher quantity of them. So you're going to get more antioxidants gram for gram. One of the interesting things that dehydrated fruit can last for around five years and veggies can last for around 10 years if you're able to lower the humidity enough. So if you can get the humidity down, uh, it just it lengthens the life of these foods. So, so they're great for storage. But once again, you may also want to use something like Mylar bags or other high quality bags that don't break easily because sometimes the fruit can become kind of sharp and so putting it in a higher quality bag or some people even would put it in glass jars and these kind of things to keep its longevity much better to keep it through the winter season if they're growing it on their own fruit trees or even if they're just simply buying it at the grocery store what about diabetes what about when it comes to dried fruit and diabetes now this is a study of over a hundred thousand people uh, the study is uh, fruit consumption and risk of type 2 diabetes results from three prospective longitudinal cohort studies in the British Medical Journal. Now over 100,000 people, when you look at fruit in general, you see on the left, the, anything below the, the black line there is lowering the statistical lowering the likelihood of somebody having diabetes who consumes these different various different fruits like cantaloupe for roughly 50 percent of people it might slightly increase their chances of diabetes but you notice the the reference line even drops below so for many people it won't cause an issue strawberries for the vast majority it lowers their chances of type 2 diabetes oranges lower their chances of diabetes more then we come to peaches plums and apricots and they lower it more. Notice where the plums are. They're right there, but we're going to come back to plums in a moment. Grapefruit lower it more. Bananas lower your chances of type 2 diabetes. Then we come to apples and pears. They lower it more. And prunes. What's a, what's a prune? Now, a prune is a dried... What? It's a plum, right? And so notice when you look at... You look back to the left and you see that prunes are actually potentially more beneficial to a diabetic than even a fresh plum. Who would have guessed, right, that a dried fruit might be even better for a diabetic? So we go on to the next one. Grapes and raisins are equally as good for fighting or to help avoid having type 2 diabetes. So even raisins, right, and people think, yeah, but this is concentrated because you don't have all the water. That's true, but the reality is somehow still it is beneficial for avoiding type 2 diabetes. Then you get down to blueberries. So fruit in general is fantastic for lowering your chances of type 2 diabetes. If you struggle with diabetes, 
potentially you might want to avoid the you know, melons and these kind of things, watermelon or cantaloupe, these kind of things might really spike blood sugar in those people who are susceptible to type 2 diabetes. But what about dehydrated fruit? Look, looking at this is, this is fascinating here. Research reported in the March 2020 journal Advances in Nutrition revealed that traditional dried fruit consumption, what is traditional dried fruit? Dried, it is dried fruit without added sugar or preservatives like sulfur can lower certain risks of cancer or cancer mortality. And they were specifically looking at dates, prunes, and raisins. Now, you may know that looking at something like dates, these are extremely high in sugar, and yet people who consume them have lower levels potentially of cancer. At least it's associated with lower levels of cancer. So looking at raisins, looking at these different things. Some people might actually have trouble with sulfur dioxide. Uh, a few people do. It's, it's statistically a small amount. I happen to be one of those people. If I eat dried fruit that they have put preservatives like sulfur in it, it gives me stomach trouble. But sulfur dioxide added to dried fruit can cause asthmatic trouble to a small amount of people. It may also cause itching in a small quantity of people. But like I said, for me, it causes stomach trouble. So you find that it, in general, I mean, adding any kind of chemicals or, or substances to food that's not naturally in them probably isn't the best thing for your health. Some people will make it by okay with it, but I avoid it myself. One of the simple ways to avoid it 100%, so you don't even have to guess, if you buy organic dried fruit, they are not allowed to add these kinds of preservatives to them. So you know that as you're, as you're getting these things. So looking further, research revealed a 24% lowered risk of precancerous colorectal polyps, a 49% lowered risk of prostate cancer, and check this out, a 65% lower risk of mortality from pancreatic cancer from consuming dried fruit specifically. This is incredible. So dried fruit may actually be something that may e either fight cancer or help you to avoid cancer. Now, when you think about this, throughout human history, the only way for many human beings to get fruit in the winter months, unless they lived right around the equator, but if, if they weren't right in the equator, I mean, yes, if you're in the equator, you might be able to find certain fruits year round, and you can even find some fruits year round, even in you know cold areas like Michigan, where you can find wintergreen berries all winter long, but for the most part, you can't eat you know, fresh fruit year round. The only way to get it throughout Earth's history was what? Dried fruit. And it's interesting that God made it so that it was incredibly helpful for people, even in the winter months, to have these preserved dried fruit. We also see that the research showed that overall dried fruit consumption seemed to be even more protective against cancer than even fresh fruit, at least in the majority of the studies. It was equal to or even greater benefit in either fighting or avoiding cancer than fresh fruit. That is incredible. I mean, who, who would really ever guess that? That you would have such a benefit for that. So we've been doing some dehydrating. We had our bananas and looking at them, I mean, the, it doesn't take too long. About 24 hours is good enough and you can simply peel them off at the end. If you want them to come off easier, you can flip them in the process. We didn't do it this time and, and it's much harder. You can see they literally stick on there. But if you flip them halfway through the process, it's much easier to, to get them off at the end. They'll just pop off very easily. And you can fill up your, your bag or your, your glass jar, however you want to do it. And it's a great experience both for the family. You get together and do it as a family or even if you have little children, they can be a part of it and they also can enjoy this. Just another thing that we can do, a uh, simple lifestyle thing, have it both for our health, but also for a blessing, a time together with our families. You know, and if you take the time to store up some of your fruit and you're, you know, dehydrating some of these things, some apples or uh, some pears, which are incredible, by the way, bananas, what have you, uh, and you're storing these things up, you know, you keep them back for the winter season, so you'll have them. There's a beautiful promise in the book of Deuteronomy, which says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses where you're storing your food. 
and in all that you set your hand unto, and he shall bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. It's a beautiful promise, and so you can enjoy fresh fruit whenever you can get it, but you can even be blessed to know that you're, as you're eating the dried fruit, that you can have these fantastic benefits to your health.